Okay. Um, as I told you last evening, we we prepared um, carefully and we designed our theme of lectures very carefully. But after hearing your presentation yesterday in the morning and in the afternoon, uh, we changed our mind. So, <laughs> so this is this was uh, my cover. A slide of the presentation that I prepared carefully, but yeah, so I was um, I was going to talk about Extinction Rebellion, uh, which was um, for me um, um, somehow I am engaged in this movement in Korea, and uh, from this movement um, I am very inspired. So I wanted to talk about this, but yesterday I thought that. Telling you my story is more important. So if you are interested in about this, and please contact me as well. But for this time, I'm going to tell you my own story and my experience. So yesterday, uh, during the future radical future conference, um, we heard a lot of times the word radical. So I asked myself, what's the meaning of radical? So for the whole day, I had this question. What, what, does, what's the, what does it mean to be radical? What was the most radical experience in my life? I asked myself to, um, to contribute to make the radical future. Um, I asked this question and my answer was using compost toilet. <laughs> that was the most radical thing in my, in my life. For three years, I used compost toilet. Um, I recycled my own poo, and <laughs> we went through the fermentation process, and we mixed the compost with healthy soil, and we grow our own food and we ate the food again. So the whole circulation I experienced for, for the, during the fall season, just for three years, that was the most transformative and radical experience for me. So I'm going to tell you that kind of story to you. <coughs> so this is the place um, near I live. This is the temple. Uh, this mountain is called Jiri Mountain. So one of the highest mountain in southern part of Korea, except Jeju-do. Um, actually, I met Jung-gyu here last year, April. So she gave, she gave us a lecture. She gave the lecture about universe story, the exactly same story like you did uh, just a minute before. And but for three hours. Uh, yeah, for three hours. <laughs> But the amazing thing is nobody left after the three hours lecture. So everybody loved her story and... Um, so this village is a kind of community, a sustainable community, but not a strict community, a loose kind of community. Uh, people who want to live in, um, to follow the um, philosophy of Sorry, <laughs> because I, I'm very nervous. Um, so, this is from uh, Skyview. Um, there's a temple near there, near here. So, uh, near the temple, uh, we have a lot of organic farm here. So, this is um, kind of experimental area. Uh, a few years ago, we um, introduced the permaculture principle here. We make this design. This simple means uh, everything is interconnected, like uh, you, uh, you heard before from jung -gyu. So this means human and animals. What does it mean? Plant. No, no, this is plant. Bird. Star. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Can you see my hand shaking? <laughs> so, uh, sun and moon, moon and sun, something like that. Um, 
Our village has about 2,000 people, so, but um, 2,000, the population is 2,000, uh, not very big. Uh, but hundreds of them are from outside of the community. They come to this village to live in a sustainable way. So, um, in the village, we have school, a, li a little alternative school. This is me a few years ago, and this was my students. That is very small school, alternative, we called it alternative school. It's like a folk high school. Yeah. So I decided to um, have class on climate crisis. And by the way, I went back to my school, uh, but this time just for two days per week. Because I know, uh, what I realized that I should know my limit. We should know the Earth's limit. Because we didn't know that. The Earth was burnt out. <laughs> I was burnt out. I, um, I don't think we are separated. We are all connected. So I should take care of myself. So I decided to go back to my school just for two days. So, but usually I, um, I used to teach creative writing or sometimes English or sometimes gardening. But teaching climate crisis is quite challenging because I didn't have any science background. So I practiced, pra I prepared and practiced a lot so many times and I did myself rehearsal and I prepared 100 pages of slides. Um, <laughs> so my first class was uh, last year, March. So I let them know um, big school strike was going on all over the world. In Korea, we just have three times big school strike for the um, uh, youth. So our first school, school, first school strike happened March 15th. I just let them know and I just let them listen to Greta's speech and I let them know IPCC report and everything. But um, actually, I couldn't have the time to listen to the feedback of the students because I prepared so many things. <laughs> uh, three days later, um, one of the teachers from school called me that um, three of our students decide to, decided to go to Seoul to join the protest, to skip the school. So they went to school, they skipped the school, they went to Seoul to protest. So I was really surprised. I, did, I didn't expect them to do so, them to do. Um, they prepared this and this. So uh, my school asked me, maybe somebody need to join with them because they are still young. Somebody need to accompany with them. Because uh, Seoul is far from where I, I came from. It takes four hours by car. So I decided to join. So you can see me here. I'm the only one who wasn't prepared. <laughs> and this photo was everywhere in, uh, in the media and in the newspaper. So. It was easy to find this photo. And we had another school strike in May last year. And more students joined. So school, I uh, have to talk about this opening. If you join the strike, um, a lot of people want to join the strike. What about our everyday life? Somebody have to do weeding and somebody have to take care of our chicken and uh, we need to talk about this openly. So they had the meeting in a very democratic way. So I heard about that. I could enjoy. So and so and at the end of the semester, I had time to share of their feeling. So during this time um, on this class students started to tell me their own feeling on climate change. One of the students told me that she cried 
uh, whenever I had climbed across this class. Whenever she went back home after my class, she cried all night. I didn't know that. So I was really sad and she was not the only one to react with such a, a intense emotion. So some of them told me that um, they were very sad and they were terrified. And I just realized that um, we need to our limo we need to let our emotion flow. So most of most of the res response, emotional respo response from them is um, scared, worried, and miserable, and heavy, heartbreaking, and angry, this kind of thing. And I told them our pain and our love are not different. They are the both side of coin. Uh, without love, you can't feel the pain. Because we love our world, we love our universe, because we love our life, we feel pain. So some of the students say, but still I am grateful. Because I got to know what's happening in the world and I'm not the only one. A lot of people are starting to act. So some of them said to me, I am grateful. And we just realized that we are not alone. And this is Joanna Macy. Um, I am influenced a lot by her work. So uh, the gratitude practice we did at the beginning of our session, the so open synthesis, is from her work. So this was my first time to conduct that work in foreign languages. Today was a very special day for me. She said, um, she said uh, about our pain and uncertainty. Everybody feels it. Even though who has a lot of power, even though uh, who is in cooperation system, everybody feels it. It's unprecedented. And, but we tend to block it because we fear. But don't be afraid to let your heart broken open. The heart that breaks open can hold the whole universe as that big. Like we heard before from Changyu, we heard universe story, we are that big. So this is my story.